Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture, and it's a big one. We're going to be talking about the newest album from Rustin Kelly, The Weakness. The frustrating thing about defining Rustin Kelly in context is that, to some, he's a secondary player. Now, I personally don't buy that, and if my reviews and year-end list placements of Dying Star and Shape and Destroy haven't proved anything about how Rustin Kelly is a unique figure within his crux point of genres, I'm not sure what will. Now, I also realize that both albums have a profound emotional resonance for me because they hit at times unlike few others, but the fact that they both still work so goddamn well away from those moments and with the memory steadily fading is a testament to their power. I reviewed Dying star at the midst of burnout at the tail end of 2018, and there's very few albums that felt so right in the moment of bottoming out and slowly finding a way to crawl forward. Shape and Destroy fell in the first year of the pandemic, and there's something about its painful journey to try and stay healthy. Now being in the clear, it's the moment to keep rolling forwards, being comfortable with what he could be. It felt like a balm, even if you knew that tragedy was just around the corner. And that's the thing. Shape and Destroy, despite how some people characterized it, it wasn't a breakup or divorce album. Even though it had been released just after his separation from Casey Musgraves, it had clearly been recorded in better times. She had backing vocals on the album. And while that shadow gave the project a quiet tragedy, to me it never overtook it. An impression all the more cemented by actually seeing Rustin Kelly live in late 2021. But that's the thing, Casey Musgraves is more famous and critically acclaimed than Rustin Kelly, at least in the mainstream. And the aftermath of the divorce, she put out an album in 2021 with Starcrossed. And while I appreciate the writing more than most, which felt honest to their complicated separation, the pop pivot and sound didn't really work as well as I think she intended, especially coming after Golden Hour. To me, Rustin Kelly was long out of her shadow, but that was not true for a lot of folks. And that raised a big risk for whatever project our emo country singer-songwriter would deliver that would necessarily touch on that subject and be framed as the other side of the story. Not really how I saw it, by Dying Star, I found Rustin Kelly a force in his own right, even if Casey's voice was flitting across the albums, he had his own introspective and unique story to tell that felt independent of hers. The one reason I loved the collab song Headspace he did with Charlie Adams so much that year, but it did create this sinking feeling of pain and dread that I knew was coming, especially on an album called The Weakness. It was probably going to be a hard listen for more reasons than one, beyond my own circumstances, but it's also been one of my most heavily anticipated albums of 2023, even with the lead-off singles leaving me with a lot of production questions, even more than Shape and Destroy. But now that we're here, can we get into the weakness? Well, I think that we can. And it's kind of fascinating to place this project in context of the first two. Dying Star was hitting rock bottom, digging oneself out. Shape and Destroy was learning how to live with newfound healing and focus. And the weakness is now the harrowing test that that health will face in the wake of external challenges that threaten the very foundations in which it was all built. This comes necessarily with a change in focus. The album feels bigger, it's broader and more scattered, the nerves are more rattled, the production is measurably rougher, and it's probably Rustin Kelly's most immediate album to date. I'll agree with him that it's not really a divorce album so much as one where the divorce happened alongside other events that would push him to his absolute limit. The flip side to Shape and Destroy's measured, incredibly even pace and tone where it almost starts to run together. The weakness absolutely does not. It's easily Rustin Kelly's messiest album to date, although likely also his most accessible given how many steps he's taken away from country, and yet Third time's the charm. It still works. I'd be hard-pressed not to call this one of the best of 2023. He did it again. But I really want to dig into what doesn't work on the album first. It really comes down to two factors. The first is a couple niggling points around Rustin Kelly's delivery. He's an insanely expressive and raw singer, and that depth of feeling allows him to nail the loudest and softest moments on the album. From the crushing holler of the title track and Michael Keaton, to the soft-spoken crooning love Let Only Love Remain and Mending Song in Cold Black Mile, albeit with a lot more reverb across 
the board, they amplify all the choral harmonies. I was kind of hesitant about this choice early on, but like with the National, I've kind of warmed to it. It creates this feeling of a great weight crushing down on him, amplifying the haunted loneliness of coming back from the brink and still trudging forward. And it's not a persistent element of all the production and mixing here. What I like a little bit less is his falsetto. It's weedy, it's thin, there's this filmy brittleness when it comes up on the hooks of Breakdown, especially Better Now. It doesn't have that same power. That effervescence has been something that Rustin Kelly's been approaching since the very beginning, and it feels very reminiscent of slightly more synthetic sides of indie folk. And this is where we're going to have to talk about the production, handled this time by Nate Mercero, a pretty major shift away from Gerard Kritstein. Now, credit where it's due, there is a breadth of tone and experimental flair that allows Rustin Kelly to dabble in more genres and, in my opinion, stick the landing, especially in some of those fluttery indie folk moments. Moments, but the atmosphere doesn't always work. I like the muted chiming and rattling acoustics of Hellfire that became even more washed out on Dive, but then you get the gauzy synths that hit a distinctly off frequency on St. Jupiter, especially against some of the sharper jangle of the guitars, and that is something I think can be a bit of a mixed blessing with Mercero's production. The album definitely feels more immediate. The biggest moments they feel bigger, the emotional contrast stretches over a broader spectrum, and for as much as the textures can feel a bit washed out at points, a lot of the songs still really pop out in a way where the country tones on his first two albums needed more time to really really sink in. They felt more introspective. You needed more time to sink into the vibes. Or if you had to brood, let the music wash over you, they were more than happy to oblige. It led Dying Star to feel a little bit long and Shape and Destroy to feel a bit uniform, but they were astoundingly effective in that lane. I'd say that Mercero's production leads to a more song-focused experience, especially as the whiplash sequencing definitely takes a bit of getting used to, but it also connects way more quickly. The stoicism on the brink of the title track, the borderline pop-punk acoustic rattle of Breakdown and Holy Shit. That sounds like something that could have been dropped in the early 2000s, the latter with a punch-up from John Feldman. Then you have the peeling melody of Wicked Hands to the haunted organs of Cold Black Mild that just wrecks me every single time. And then there's Michael Keaton. I actually had a patron ask for a song review of just this song, and I kind of see why. It's one of Rustin Kelly's best ever songs for hitting that perfect dirt emo balance with the faster low-end groove, the choppy rollick, and the utterly idiosyncratic sing-along hook that rolls across heartbreak, stoned-out humor, and utter exasperation. One of my favorite songs I have heard all damn year, certainly one of his best. But you know what? In fact, let's get into some of the lyrics, and, and again, I want to stress, it isn't really a divorce album so much as one where a divorce happened, and where despite his tangible angst and pain at the memories, where you can tell he's still very much going through it, Rustin Kelly's gonna keep on charging forward. Shape and Destroy laid down a foundation, it's gonna be tested, but he's gonna hold firm. And the test starts off from the very beginning. The title track in Hellfire show just how easy it would be to give up, to succumb, slide back towards his vices. Now he's holding firm, for now, and then you get the moments where he rummages through what self-pity and the failed relationship look like, with a lot of heartbreaking, very realistic detail. And what I love, once again, is the more mature framing. Rustin Kelly spoke in interviews about how he wanted to write songs where he could find honor in them 20 years later, not write a lot of slander or just expose the mess. And with Let Only Love Remain and St. Jupiter, there's more of a focus on the passage of time, where he cherishes the best memories, but also lets the seasons change, the flowers die, all the more amplified with the autobiographical ballad mending song, or the road to healing, it's gonna be long, it's gonna be painful, but that foundation is holding true. And if he lets it all go, he might find some of that nirvana. But this is also why Michael Keaton is kind of quintessential to holding this album together. Yeah, getting high with a stupid multiplicity reference, it's ridiculous, but it's the deflection from mounting irritation from a manipulative mess who's trauma dumping, he's ready to burn it all down. He's also self-aware enough to puncture his own angst, he could well be talking about himself there, with some actual perspective. It's a bold choice, but one I'd argue where he sticks the landing. The song is, again, fantastic. And from there, I mean, I don't know, it's about living. Dive has him opening up to real vulnerability with a new partner. Breakdown is 
well true to the word. And it comes with overworking to avoid getting into his own emotions, self-destructive tendencies that strike in that revelation unholy shit. Though the key line that he's either shooting the bullseye or trying to miss, implying that he actually knows what he has to do in order to get better. And that's true, he's done this work before, he's just gotta do it again. And by the final third of the album, it's that hollowed out sense of relief of reaching that vulnerable place. And even while he might backslide, he knows he's doing it. He can take the steps to get better, no matter how lonely and hard they are. Wicked Hands is a great song, not just for the Sufjan Stevens reference to Death with Dignity, where Rustin Kelly questions what any of this is worth in the end in a wry crisis of faith, but also what happens when you try to change for a partner to be better, but it's not who you are, and you wind up on the cusp of being self-destructive again. It highlights the messy reality of therapy that a lot of this you gotta do for yourself, not at the expense of other people or relationships, but that they will be made better by you knowing yourself more and better. And that's why Cold Black Mile is such a devastating closer. It's lonely, knowing yourself, knowing your damage, knowing so much wrecked in your wake where you might not get clarity or closure, but you've weathered it all. And you can see Dawn on that road ahead. Folks, I don't know how much I can add with this one. It seems like Rustin Kelly albums just come along when I most need them. And while I won't say that they're better than therapy or that this is by any means perfect, it is therapeutic in the hard way, the right way, of having to get into that rough territory, do the work. And Rustin Kelly's had to go through more than most in actually trying to get there. Simply by how well it balances out the external and internal pressures, I'd say it's his most accessible to date. Tough to gauge whether it's better than his first two, given how uneven of a listen it can feel. I'm not sure how well it'll persist or grow on me throughout the course of the year, unlike Dying Star or Shape and Destroy. But at least for now, this is one of the best. If there's anything that this album proves, is that Rustin Kelly, on his own, is a force to be reckoned with. So please check this out, folks. It's something special. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be extremely grateful. Yeah, I know this sort of review is probably not a surprise, but this album really is something special. It's going to be something I go back to a lot this year. Beyond that, though, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to get involved in supporting the channel beyond my merch, the link to my Patreon is right over there, where you can request albums, get into my Discord to argue with me more directly, or hell, just support the channel. One more announcement is that in two days, on April the 12th, I've got a long-form video essay dropping. Uh, just say you guys are going to want to stick around for this. It's a big one, and it's a doozy, so just stay in tune for that. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.